Hey everybody and welcome back to episode 4 of my full deadly playthrough of the full campaign for Gloomhaven Digital. In this week's episode we go through Ruinous Rift again, we go back and hopefully beat it this time. Also we go against Sunken Vessel and we go to Decaying Crypt. Sunken Vessel is a side mission, Decaying Crypt is another core mission as we push the story along. Still our original three mercenaries here, we've still got no retirements. We do get a bit closer though in this particular episode, which is good. And I do think probably in the next episode, we'll end up retiring at least one character, I would think. As you might be able to tell by my voice now and by the voice on the recording, I am getting over quite a bad cold that I have had over the last kind of week or so. So I'm not feeling too bad, but certainly my voice is a little bit worse for wear, so. Bear with me for this particular episode. I didn't want to not do an, uh, a weekly episode and cancel my stream. So we did it. I pushed through with it and we still had a lot of fun. But that will explain my kind of horse voice, if you like, um, throughout this entire video and now. If you don't want to come listen to my hopefully not so horse voice next week, I will be streaming on twitch.tv slash manage request every Monday, Wednesday and Sunday. Mondays is the deadly playthrough series. So that's when I'm doing those. Wednesdays is the challenges and weird builds that we do. So weird build Wednesday, we just do random fun stuff and try and mix characters together or uh, abuse items in different ways and just mess around with stuff. So that's always fun. Sundays is actually the community save day and that's when we're playing multiplayer drop in drop out with viewers. So if you want to play Gloomhaven with me, then Sunday's the best stream for you there too. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already and you enjoyed the content. But apart from that, Let's get into this week's episode. So we have no, no pending retirements, unfortunately. So we're just going to go straight into Ruinous Rift and uh, and pick it up from there. So straight into Ruinous Rift. Hmm. Oh, a vote. Right, which option do you want to go with, guys? Option one or option two? So, you have only just wandered off the main road in search of your destination when the ground begins to shift beneath your feet. What was once solid now gives way, and you find yourself falling down into a dark pit. You land 20 feet down, cushioned by the soil that fell with you. You stand up with alertness and look around, trying to get your bearings. You have fallen into a man-made cavern with some smooth stone walls and floors. This could be a trap or just some long-forgotten structure. Do we option one, use weights and ropes to climb out of the hole as quickly as possible, or option two, explore the area? Vote in the poll. Two. What would we use as a weight? Well, of course, one of Craig's boulders. Of course. Easy. No, you mean you don't have to unlock side scenarios to run them in casual mode in tabletop. Oh, I suppose not, no. Kind of ruins the flow of the game a little bit, though, don't you think? At least I would think so. Two? Everyone's gone two. <clears throat> no good. No good. Lighting a torch, you see a number of passages leading you out of the stone room. And phased, you head down one of them and begin exploring the network of chambers. In one, you find a pedestal sitting atop that a small metal sphere. You take the strange sphere and continue your search, but the only other remarkable thing you find is an exit. Hmm. But at least we've got a metal sphere. On the way back to the ruinous crypt, Hale seems almost happy as she trudges through the mud with you, eager to help fight back demons and undead. Why is my stream it's been lagging? So long since I've been outside of Gloomhaven, she says, swaying the elemental sensor back and forth as she walks. The city is necessary for my studies. But it feels good to take a small break and travel this plane again. And with so much less danger this time as well. Uh, 
Does it show in digital if, it, if an event adds another city or road event? You feel like this one had one. It doesn't add, unfortunately, no. If you go to my tool sheet, there, that will um, aid you with all of that stuff. I have our, our tab called road and city events. You look at the ace there questioningly. Sure, cultists and demons aren't exactly friendly encounters, but last time I, I wonder if it's the Christmas lands, lights. Well, that's something Why is it I lagging? I would never speak of. It's really weird. My stream is lagging for no, like it never lags. Hail grows silent until you arrive at the crypt. Opening the ancient doors, you half expect the place to be teeming with cultists and demons once again. But the stone halls are as silent and barren as death. You move towards the main chamber where you find the giant. That is really weird, chat. I don't know what's going on. I'm getting a lot of uh, bad things coming up my end. I'm getting a lot of drop frames my end. I haven't changed anything. Oh, wow. What is this new... Gloomhaven is eating my card alive. What the... All right, I'm quitting it now. What the hell? Uh, that's not cool. So Gloomhaven was 99% utilizing my graphics card. 99%. My 3080 Ti. Uh, you haven't noticed anything? It was I, it was all on like freeze frames at my end. So like everything is fine now, right? Everything seems to be fine. But I was dropping loads of frames back there. Huh. Is this something in the open beta branch, maybe? Hmm. That was a bit weird. I've added the DirectX 12 option now, so. This cough. Okay. Maybe that will be better. Keep an eye on it. I hope that's not a sign of things to come. But I've not had any problems in recent weeks at all. And then just suddenly in that particular one, it was absolutely just murdering my, um, my frames. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, so far so good. 
Nothing you are aware of, but then you'll probably never see a three in this card. Well, it was a bit weird. It just, I mean, I've now reselected the option. So maybe that will do the job. Okay, so all of that's good. All right, back to Ruinous Rift we go then. Oh. Same event. That's good. Well, it should be. On the way back to the you look at Hail Group. Okay, so what battle goals shall we take? Well, there's no doors, so I guess we're doing this. I mean, we're not probably going to be able to do any battle goals on this one at all. Cause a trap to be sprung. It's pretty hard. Kill an enemy. Also pretty hard. Now, I think I want to change my cards up a little bit. Because last time we failed this scenario, I just felt like we didn't have everything that we needed, really. Like, realistically, I need more disarm, I think. Which, I mean, I've got Forceful Storm. Maybe like Volatile Concoction might be pretty good here. I mean, we're not moving. So we can get rid of anything that's just movement based, really. Seems maybe a little bit better. <clears throat> oh, the frames are taking a massive hit again. Frames have just taken a huge hit. And I do not know why. You just scored hail last time. Yeah, this is like the really hard one. Is my fan on? Yes. Yes. I mean, my computer seems fine, but... I mean, I'll show you guys the task manager here on the 3D rendering. It might be this screen, but... Right. Let me show you my screen. This... Does not look healthy. Look at this. What is this? 99% utilization of my GPU. Look at it. It's crashing the game. This is this is crashing my my game. What? What is this? What is life? Look, come back to here. It's fine. It's those, that 3D render screen. <laughs> do you think it's something to do with the skins? Yeah, look, as soon as I go to that screen, I'm, I get a massive frame rate dip. This screen. Look at that. Trying to kill my computer devs?
What? That's so weird. Let's let's see what it's like in game, shall we? Hey Emoto, good to see you, buddy. Can someone clip that by the way? Oh my okay, if I can clip it myself. Maybe. I have to send that to the devs and be like, what just happened? Oh, well, this seems to be fine again. Did you miss something? Yeah, so... <laughs> so... In the character select screen... Um, like, where you have the character model and you can change the skin and you see the information about the character. In that particular screen, for some reason, the game is utilizing 99% of my GPU. Of my 3080 Ti. Similar to how we used to have this weird graphics problem with a few cards as well. But. That's pretty bad. Uses a lot of graphics, a lot of particle effects. Right, well, I think it's like here and here, right? Hmm. Did I see the graphics issue posted in Discord with less? No, I did not. Maybe it's the same thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, God. The FPS limits have got broken, so I'm probably getting 4,000 FPS. Right. That might explain it. That might explain it. Okay. Sure. Okay. Hopefully that has solved the issue. 
Great. Now let's play some Gloomhaven. <laughs> cool. All right. If it's a known issue, that's fine. Right. So um, we're going to get back Rock Slide here. So we'll play Rock Slide. We played Rock Slide. We'll get this here. We'll get Rock Slide back again with Volatile Concoction Bomb so we can continually play Rock Slide. I think that's the plan for at least the first few turns. My Thief, I just need to, like, plug a gap. I think the gap is, like, sort of here. Maybe here or here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go here. Okay, so this starts off nice and easy, but as we experienced last time, this will go down very, very quickly. Right. Just gonna make as many rocks as possible. The last time, I don't think we had enough rocks. That was the problem. Not enough rocks. That's always the problem. So, more rocks. Yes. Yeah, boy. Oh. A little bit spicy. Windy, man, eh? Hmm. Well, we can deal with him next time, maybe. Uh. Well, don't have much to do with you, do I, really, at this point in time? Uh. No. Oh, let's do a little, do a little heal. That's quite nice. That we're gonna use that for a little while, so let's do that. Okay, right. What do you want to do? One, two, three. Yeah, it'll stun that. All right, that's all right. And uh, oh, actually, could just do a little. Yeah, it might be bad to do that. Let's do that instead. Rage free. Saw joke. Uh. Too bad I can't just get them all to create rocks. We'd have so many. Yeah, I mean, it would be a lot easier if it was just free crack cards. Instead, I have to deal with this. Seems like a stupid rule to me, but there you go. Oh, unfortunately, I cannot completely surround a spawner. No, unfortunately not. They will spawn in the next open available... Hex. So, I could sort of force them in a certain direction, but no, eventually they will just end up spawning everywhere. Also, a lot of these guys have flying, so... Stop it. Oi. Enough of that. Very good.
Right, here they come then. Oh, I can't say I'm really looking forward to this, but... There you go. the range on this for? Uh, rubbish. Three. That'll do. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe slot problem. Oh. It's good to see me. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. It's nearly it's nearly time. Not long to go now. I hope to see you all. Well, thanks. I hope to see you all at the Christmas party on Saturday. Very special Christmas party. Should have done this. Oh well, it probably didn't really matter. It probably doesn't even matter. Right, that's me done. You might be doing a 12 hour drive home if the roads open up here on Saturday, but if not, you will be here. Awesome. Right, it should be fun. As Craig said, it should be fun. I'm hopeful that I have shaken my cold by then. Although I do have my, um... I actually have my COVID booster. Um, I have my COVID booster on Thursday. So, kind of hoping that that doesn't also just, you know, ruin me. That would be annoying if it did. Okay, so last time we lost this because we didn't kill enough things, really. Felt like we just didn't kind of do enough damage. It's kind of hard, though, to deal with these guys, isn't it? With the Kragheart, at least. Kragheart's just not very good at attacking these guys. I, mean, I suppose I could do this. It's not terrible. Two. 
to that should be okay 24 hour stream party i don't know about 24 hours but it'll be a, a fairly sizable stream i hope oh look the devs are here Ooh, now that. Now that's pretty nice. That is actually pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, boy. A little bit spicy. That was very nice. Um, keep this one stunned. <sighs> By the way, is European vaccination certificate accepted to enter the party? Ah. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I think I'll allow it. Yeah, I think that's going to be okay. As long as there's marble racing, you'll be there. There's definitely going to be some marble racing. That is for sure. It wouldn't be a party without some, would it, really? Okay, so here's where things start to get scary. Like, really, really scary. Right, let's start filling in some of these gaps. Um, we're just going to perverse edge stun this and uh, or and attack this and go invis ourselves, I think. Oh no, the seven. Well, that could have been worse, I suppose. Honestly, it would be quite nice to not have to worry about one of these guys. Don't need to go invisible quite yet. Do I do two damage to the mind thief here? I don't. Uh, I don't think so. Quite convinced it's worth it yet. Is this Gloomhaven Tower defense? Yeah, kind of. Basically. Um. I think I want to stay where I am, right? I think so.
Oh my god, retaliate five? Oh. I mean, it might be worth it. Come on. One damage shy. One. One. It's going to be hard with this Pyce to survive six or more turns. Yeah, quite possibly. I mean, last time we didn't. But also last time we got quite unlucky, I would say, with most of our pulls. Yeah, Craig, Craig can deal with that one damage for sure. Massive Boulder over here is going to be good. Just need to actually get over there though. I'm getting close to needing to unstable upheaval, but not quite yet. So again, the main concerns we have is we have this. We're also not quite in the right place. So this is a bit of a problem. We actually need to like Frigid Apparition move here on like less than 29 which kind of sucks actually it's fine because this is stunned right so it doesn't actually matter it's only if i move off too early that might be a bit of a problem Yeah, my initiative is not great here for what it is that I really want to do. Yep. Kind of got the double stun now, though. I think that's okay. Flame Demon a little bit annoying, maybe. I think that's pretty good turn. <sighs> oh, 
can't get in with that thing now, though. Can't get in with Boulder anymore. Oh, it's just so brutal. Rumbling advance for the next one. I mean, yeah, I suppose I could actually. <sighs> Didn't want to have to do one damage here, but this immobilize screws me quite a bit. I have to short rest and go for it. Yeah, this is where it all falls apart. <laughs> hey, Ultra Combo. You enjoy the stream? Can't wait to play this yourself. My playthroughs are very helpful. Awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying them, dude. Welcome. How's the scenario for a four player party? You're playing on hard with very squishy characters. Only one you can take some hits is Sun, but she is has the enhancement. Um. Well, I think this scenario in general is is like. It's hard to kill the enemies unless you... I guess maybe if you're playing on lower levels, it's maybe easier. I'd say probably playing on two players easier, right? All right, GG's. That's it. Like, that's the exact same thing happened to me the first time we tried it. The exact same thing. I could even get rid of rocks like that. I don't care. I just cannot lose unstable upheaval. I mean, I can use the bottom of stamina booster to get it back, but it just feels really miserable. I don't think I can even rock slide really anymore. I'll try. They are going invisible, right?
That's kind of okay. Well, I'll keep the Sun Demon Elite at bay, at least. Perfect. It's kind of a nice immobilize there, though. Uh, I don't know about this one, chat. We've already burnt through so many cards. So at least now I've managed to fill everything in, right? So there's nothing can spawn. The only thing that can spawn is it can spawn there now. So this thing will spawn there, which is a bit of a problem. But if we can control it... Okay. Okay. How many more rounds? Three. What's the range of this? Range three. I just really need to go invisible here again, don't I? I really do. Eclipse isn't very good here unless he's somewhat higher level so he can kill a lazy vampire for. Yeah, I, I don't think so either. I mean, generally speaking, you just need a lot of control in this one. All ways to kill the elites extremely quickly. But Eclipse would struggle with the speed of this scenario as well a little bit. Would be useful, of course. It's 
Sam, these two. Done this one. All right, that was good. The flame deep, that flame demon one was good. I think I'm going to have to walk onto this four damage trap at some point. Not right now, because it'll open up this hex, but... I think that's something I might need to do. Live. Not, not. Live. Yeah, I think I think maybe if you had Eclipse plus somebody else to generate their elements for them with the Killer Elite, it'd be actually it would be very good. You just need like you would need to really cycle that card very quickly for the first couple of rounds. Actually, it's from round two onwards, right? So you would set up round one, then from round two onwards, you'd basically need to be like cycling, um, killing that. And that, yeah, that would work pretty well. I think this is also a generally pretty decent strategy of just trying to box the enemy out and deal with just a couple of really hardcore ones. Like, I'm pretty happy with that general, um, like, idea, if you like. Right, I want to make sure this gets used properly. One, two, three. Stun powder. Good. So now this is like an open spawn hex, which is pretty scary. Oh no, no earth. I think I actually I think I got a mana potion on the mind thief. It will be okay with that. I think we'll be okay. And we'll just waste something here. Well, that might actually be kind of useful. That's not useful at all. Think you need a few more rocks though. <laughs> We're a little bit shy on the rocks. Hey Vandalay, take two on the rift. Yeah. Although this one's 
I mean, we're, we're at the same position that we were last time. Well, I don't feel massively confident going into the last two rounds. It's possible, though. Okay, so we kill that because he was going to get in here and hit Hale. We didn't want that to happen. We're just trying to preserve Hale as much as possible. Uh, nobody else can reach Hale, so that's good. We just basically have to protect her for one final round after this, which is going to be really hard. One turn, chat. One turn. You like how the mind thief has just been pretending to be an invisible rock, which I say. It's a rock with teeth. <laughs> hey, Gripe. How's it going, buddy? Hey, you Dio. You just finished this scenario, killer. Yeah. I mean, like, we could win here or we could lose. I mean, I can't do anything because I'm disarmed. So that's fun. I kind of just need to go early. This this guy is the scary one here. So if I could perverse edge this sun demon. Maybe frigid apparition the wind demon. Then we just let the crack heart tank the rest of it. Or I do the opposite. I stun this. And then we just, we just burn a load of cards to damage. We just let that happen. And we just hope that that's enough. Um, we just hope that that is enough. I don't think there's anything I could do here at all at this point in time. Literally just play two cards and hope. I guess I'll go early and play rock slide because who knows? You never know. I don't think I can pet any more rocks now. <laughs> I think that's okay. We're going to get hit here, though. I think that's okay.
All right, so it's literally just this guy and this guy. And he's healing. Make sure that I'm not being stupid or anything. I don't think so. I have to take the retaliate damage, but it's worth it. Worth it for the win. And then make sure there's no other shenanigans, like some sort of ranged attack coming from anything like over here. No. No ranged attack from you guys, right? Nothing. Huh. I guess we got it. That was a nice that was a nice draw at the end there though, right? To have the wind demons go I mean they could have just drawn a times two here and that would that would have been really bad for us, right? We we could have got bad luck with the flips, but that actually was probably as good as we could hope for in the last round. Nice. Very happy with that. I didn't really want to have to play this one again, if I'm honest. <laughs> so, oh, where should we put a rock? Um, <laughs> I guess I could destroy the rocks, right? And then place them again. <laughs> that works, right? <laughs> I don't want to accidentally open up hail here <laughs> in any way. Um, how about that? There you go. What? Did I not? Oh, did I not accidentally play that? Oh, I thought I did. Oh, I skipped over it. I thought I still had it. I must have skipped it instead of uh, undone. Good job that didn't matter. Sun Demons didn't multi-target any of the last five rounds, which is basically the difference of a win and loss here, as Hail is a five. Mm. With hair raising intensity, you look to her, afraid that more demons got past you and are attacking her. Yeah, we did pretty well with the sun demons. We didn't get actually, we didn't really get unlucky. I would say on any of the rounds, apart from the wind demons going invisible on a round. So they did go early, get a disarm off, and go invisible for one round, um, and then into the following round. But I believe what they did on the following round wasn't that bad, so it didn't really matter. Um, or at least it couldn't, it could have been a lot worse when they came out of invisibility. So, yeah, we had one bad round of invisibility from the Wind Demons. We had two, we had some very good draws out of the Flame Demons, actually. We had several rounds where they just moved and made a trap. That was good. Um, and the Sun Demons, we managed to beat them on initiative with our stuns every single time. So, they, they, they did, barely did anything. Instead... You see her pulling her hand back out of the rift. Her forearm is withered and smoking. As her gnarled fingers clear the chaotic energies of the rift, it wavers and begins to shrink. Nice. A great wind picks up in the chamber, and the demons fighting with you show fear for the first time. Instead of digging their claws into you, <laughs> ease first they try. The stone floor, desperate to stop. E the first try the today. Rift. Their efforts are futile, however. Every last one is sucked back into their own plane. The tear shrinks to one brilliant point and disappears. Hail collapses and you run to her side. Oh, don't mind me, <laughs> she coughs. I'll be fine. This old body has seen far worse. She breaks into a fit of coughing that <laughs> soon turns into laughter. That really was something, though, wasn't it? If there's one thing I can depend on you for, it's a challenge. Here, help me up. I need to get back to Gloomhaven immediately. 
I have many new thoughts for my research. Now, feel free to come by any time and I'll figure out some way to properly thank you. Give me enhancements, please. Good job, my thief. Good job. Yeah, that scenario is definitely one where you just need to get through it and a bit of RNG is what you need. It's it's actually the kind of scenario that I would I would consider dialing the difficulty down on because it's kind of like it's a very RNG heavy scenario and that generally doesn't tend to favor the higher uh, difficulty levels, right? Like it's nice to be on higher difficulty level because you're testing your abilities and things at times, but that particular one can be won or lost, you know, and uh, very easily by a flip. So I, I, it's one of those kind of ones where if we got stuck on this for too long, I would consider like either dropping the difficulty or maybe like just going down to two mercenaries or something, changing things up a little bit just to kind of get through it. Because it's, it's one of those really. And uh, it's good that we did it on the second attempt. I mean, the crowd cart's good at it though, I think. I think rock slides you know, very good for that scenario, but it's, um, yeah. The, the increased difficulty almost makes it sometimes too hard. <clears throat> it's like I didn't even try. Well, I didn't try to kill anything, yeah. I tried really hard to not die, though. Those demons must be pretty rich since they have their own plane. Very good. Ooh, Craig, leveled up. What have you got? Level five. Ooh, petrify. No, thank you. The famed level five. Um, I've just been really enjoying going back for kinetic assault at five. So I'm going to continue to do that. So Pom was just really underwhelming in my opinion and the bottom is like a bit of a trap never found the bottom to be that great and considering that we could just play um forceful storm plus this to attack for six on 19 initiative is very good so i think i will be taking that but yeah i i used to always get stone pummel at level five but i pretty much soured on that now a little bit because i just find that most of the time it's like attack two things for three with muddle and that's just really quite underwhelming at level five or in any way at least kinetic assault's got a low initiative too it's got a, a good initiative for this character that can help you out and actually combos pretty well and movement on the top is never a bad thing right i mean a little bit of sneaky movement on the top never a bad thing Um, uh, so I think we did. Ch do we change a few cards here? This is usually when I look to drop backup ammunition, but considering that we're doing fun things with massive boulder, um, we might keep it. Could be time to get rid of dirt tornado then instead. Yeah, dirt tornado. Yeah, get rid of that. All right, focus. Okay, city encounter chat. What option do we go for? Is kinetic assault Craig scurry? Kind of, yeah. He just doesn't have any stuns on the bottom, unfortunately. Right. Pop, 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 Option one or option two. What are we doing? So, you decide to head to the brown door for the evening to enjoy a quartual concert. Corruption and crime run rampant in the bar, but the music is unmatched in all of Gloomhaven. You're enjoying yourself immensely when you catch a glimpse of a man in a dark, tattered robe near the back of the room. He appears to be handing vials full of red liquid to a second man. Do we option one? Further investigate the exchange between the men. Or option two, leave the criminal element alone and continue enjoying the show. Investigate because leave alone is boring. Well, yeah, the do nothing option in any game is usually not very fun, right? Hey, Iron and Wine. 
How's it going, buddy? Look, they're just wearing hoods, and one of them has got the other some punch. That could be per that could be perfectly innocent. Sometimes in a board game, nothing happens is a win, though. That is very true, like in uh, like pandemic, and in uh, I'm trying to think, where's the game where nothing happens? It actually says like nothing happens. Oh, it's really gonna annoy me now. Like push your luck style games. I can't. I swear it's a push your luck style game. <clears throat> By the way, you can see when I alt tabbed. I know. I noticed that, so I've just turned it off. <laughs> Not that I would mind you guys seeing my Twitch dashboard, but it doesn't show anything. Battlestar Galactica and stuff. Yeah. So what are we doing? Option one. Plus two rep. Good job, everybody. You subtly move in the direction of the men, monitoring their actions with your peripheral vision. You recognize the dark robes from the run-ins you have had with cultists in the area. And as you get closer, you become convinced that the vials being traded contain blood. You grab the men and cause a huge amount of commotion as you fight to drag them outside and foil their dealings. You are able to hand them off to the proper authorities, but it may be a while before you're allowed back in the brown door. The concert was ruined. Sad times. A sad day for music lovers everywhere. <laughs> a sad day for music lovers everywhere. Some people were just there to try and have a good time. We have to go and ruin it. I'm not sure why we get positive reputation for that. I'm sure a lot of people in there would be a bit annoyed. But there you go. Ruining their fun. Okay. So we have quite a lot of gold. Because that scenario gave us a lot of gold. Um, I've got another stun powder. Huh. Might be quite good to give that to the crag cart, you know. And then we've got, like, a massive boulder with stun powder. Like, that gets us basically, like, a super-powered uh, stun shot. Nothing happens is often on crossroad cards in Dead of Winter. Ah, maybe that's where I'm thinking it of it. I have played a fair bit of that in my time. That might be what I'm thinking of. To be fair, they're criminal elements according to the story text. So people with low reputation not liking you probably gives you better reputation. Yes, but I don't necessarily... I mean, it gives you better reputation with Gloomhaven in general, I guess, right? Because you're being a lawful citizen. So in general, your reputation is, is improved because you're being lawful. Does stun powder work on the splash damage of melee boulder? No. I wish it did, Baron Stain. That would be great, but unfortunately, it does not. Um, what else can we buy? Well, enhancements. We should be buying some enhancements. Oh, we have no slots left. Damn it! Oh, we do have one here though. Hmm. Could increase the range of stun shot. Seems reasonable to me. I mean, there's nothing. The thing with the Tinker is there's nothing great to enhance. We could put another hex on net shooter. Another hex on net shooter. Let's go with that. That could end up doing something. I never like putting too many enhancements on one card because it just feels like all in. I know I could do them both, right? Because this is number of cards, actually. So I could do them both. 
I'm doing both. But I always like splitting my gold. Like, obviously, enhancements are so much cheaper now. So I can actually, I can afford to do that. But usually, you wouldn't be able to afford to do stuff like this. And I much rather would split them. It's quite rare that I would put two on one card. But the new enhancements costs actually kind of make that quite, quite possible. Actually, pretty realistic. How's retirement status going? Not great. <laughs> not great. Um, we're not really making any progress towards any of them right now, apart from this one. But this is going slow. Uh, but this was pretty hard. Uh, this one, we're just not getting side scenarios at the moment. Uh, enhancements for you. I'm going to jump on there. And I'll probably bring Brain Leech back in again, I think. We did a, we did make a few adjustments, didn't we, to a few cards there. And I think I had that out. There we go. Let's do that. That seems fairly reasonable. All right, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Two away. I should make a guide on updating enhancement. What is good and possible now, but was not previously. Yeah, I think so. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. I mean, there's a lot of things to explore with the new enhancement system. Like, it really does shift a lot of the, um, like, possibilities and the build orders for certain things. It means that maybe cards that were slightly underwhelming to begin with and would maybe cost a lot of money for you to make good, now maybe they won't cost you quite as much. So perhaps they stick around for a bit longer. And that I quite like. I like the fact that you can almost make a kind of average card good, fairly cheap, fairly early. And then that means that you can maybe use that as a bit more of a, a stepping stone or like a platform to build your character off of a little bit more. Like we were talking a bit before about, um, you know, like it, I haven't got her, but the Spellweaver, I think, is is one that's in particular opens up some more opportunities for her. Because she can get quite rich. And maybe now she can actually enhance one of her summons early. So maybe you keep aid from the ether for a little bit longer. Maybe you actually build around that character a little bit more. Maybe you give it extra movement and it can get around a bit easier. Or extra range. I think that that's, that's kind of interesting. Summons in general are, are big winners. So anybody who has like an early game summon that's good, but maybe not great... Um, that's a ranged summon is kind of like benefited by it. Which is a shame because there aren't that many ranged summons in the game. You, know, you got like Thorn Shooter, Aid from the Ether, uh, Healing Sprite, uh, the Cobra, but that's like level nine. Uh, you've got the Flame Avatar as well. Is that like five? There's only like five, maybe. Oh, uh, Void Eaters, technically ranged. Six. So you've only got like six. Not a lot. And they're really the ones that are very good. So. Um, okay, well, what quest do we do now? This is kind of like the annoying thing is that we've got... A side quest. All right, let's go do a side quest. A sunken vessel. Yeah, we actually need to do that. So that's a great idea. Wait, we'll do um, we'll do sunken vessel then, because that'll help us um, get closer to unlocking uh, eclipse. Should have enhanced Tink's decoy. You clutch the faded map to your chest as if it Could there be any greater waste of money? Northern winds. You've been sailing Could there be any greater waste of money in Gloomhaven than that? Ages, 
looking for this forgotten shipwreck. Maybe if you hold the map closer, that will make its charts and figures more accurate and decipherable. Um, enhancing microbots with plus one heal. With little hope remaining, <laughs> you finally catch a glimpse of a foreboding island on the horizon. As it gets closer, you see the definite outline of a battered ship pinioned against the island's shoals, half sunk and barely held together. What enhances do I have on my crack art currently? I have wound on massive boulder and I have plus one um, push on heaving swing. Wound on massive boulder is the weird one. I've never tried that before, but someone in chat suggested it because it was quite cheap now. And um, along with backup ammunition, we thought we'd give it a go. So it's a bit of a trial run with that one. Um, but plus one on heaving swing is one of my usual go-tos. You sail around to the far side of the island, where a remote and inviting beach allows for safer anchoring. The thought of what treasure awaits you on board the ship now warms you against the wind, but your thoughts also turn to what dangers may be guarding it. Any tips for scenario 21? its way to the shore, you see a school of lurkers rise up from the surf to greet you. Yes. Who knows how long they've been following your ship from the depths, waiting for the opportune time to strike. So we actually completed that scenario live on stream. It wasn't yesterday. I think it was the day the week before, right? I don't think it was yesterday's stream because yesterday's stream we were doing other things. In fact, I think it was the last scenario we did not yesterday, but previous Sunday stream. So if you wanted to watch us play through it live, we were playing it on hard um, as part of the community save with viewers. We won on the very, very last turn. So we were kind of lucky, um, but we did complete it. And the general tips for that one is just to clear both side rooms before you go and enter through the right hand door. So go like left to so open the left hand door first clear that room then go like down through to the right clear all the way through the right enter through the right and then to be honest kind of got to get a little bit lucky with the the altar movements like the altar movements can really screw you over but if you did want to watch someone play through it that did happen uh, a few weeks ago <laughs> i died i did die i died personally but then I took over because Nonsensical had connection issues and I, and I won. So technically, technically, I played the winning move. Just, just want to, for the record, put that, make that clear. <laughs> mm. yeah. Right. Do I need to change any cards? I feel like I do, right? Because I bought in this, yeah. Didn't change anything here, did I? Nope, that's all good. And that's all set again now, right? You lost that one due to a bug. The HP, alter HP, the DB HP got a sin. Yeah, that sounds pretty harsh. If yeah, if, if the if that if the demon somehow didn't take damage for whatever reason, I guess then it would be unkillable from that point onwards, and that would yeah make you automatically lose, I guess. Yes, that's true. The Mind Thief did go and get the chest. It's a good chest, though. Okay, so Sunken Vessel. These guys have a decent army, right? One, two, three, four. Mobilize this one, stun this one, maybe...
would be nice to get the... Uh, it would be nice to get the stun up on... The wound up on this. Wound, wound. Immobilize. Yeah, okay. Then we just sort of move towards the end, right? See, this is why I quite like it. Because I could do stuff like Forceful Storm, Kinetic Assault. I can do this quite late, though. So I might do, like... Heaving Swing, Kinetic Assault, actually. figured out an immunity for a demon I could add to my mod. Immunity to rocks. I mean, you can make things immune to all damage. Don't know about just rocks, though. Not sure about that. Um... No. Oh. oh, I hate it when it does that. I meant to undo my selection, not confirm my action. But too quick. Immunity to all damage would be unbalanced, but only rocks, on the other hand, is a sweet spot. Yeah, you can make it to immunity, immunity to... Can you make them immune to attacks? Is that a thing? I mean, I guess you just give them so much shield that it doesn't matter, right? There is an amount of shield, though, that does crash the game. We learned that the other day. <laughs> there is a certain amount of shield that does, in fact, crash the game. Right, we won't do anything differently because we ain't dirty cheaters. No dirty cheating here. Even though it would have been nice to draw the plus two here. Well, not really, I suppose. It's only an attack one. Would have made very little difference. Um, okay. Mm. 
Maybe go for a toxic ball a bit earlier than that. guess there's an area on the screen to display the shields and they're all squished closer and closer and once pixels overlap the game crashes i think it was more to do with the damage calculations couldn't seem to work like it was fine until we got attacked and then suddenly the enemies were like the game couldn't work out how much damage we should take it was quite funny It was quite amusing. Oh, there's that times two. All right. So what's he moving? Four. I'm just thinking I can force both of these guys to have to move through the hazardous terrain again. So I think that's the play. Don't really want him to get the target too. So I guess I'm going to have to sit there. Oh, he's going to die anyway. I definitely could have moved. Definitely could have moved. That was an unnecessary amount of damage. Yeah, I didn't I didn't even I didn't even notice how much damage I did. I guess I just, I forgot that I did that times two right there. That was very good. Right. This should be nice and easy then. Um Do I want to open the door? That's the question. I do remember this scenario a little bit. Like we have definitely played this in digital. At least once. But I'm... I have much memory of it. Oh, no, no, no. I do now, right? There's a... Yes, so this is like... A... No, no, no. Because that's not this one. That's the other one. That's the treasure ship. The Loot Island one. This is different to the Loot Island one. I'm thinking of the Loot Island one. Hmm. I'm really... I've, 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 it feels very familiar, but it's not the Loot Island one. Right? Because that would be like... This would be the inside, and then this would be inside. Maybe it is. I am very confused. As this terrain doesn't take two move per tile, there's a different type that slows. Yes, difficult terrain, which is which is slightly different. This is difficult terrain. All this. Yes, less enemies than Lost Island, but tougher ones. Gotcha. It feels very, very similar, but obviously it's it's not. Not the same, at least. 
All right, good. Very good, very good. Um, I might just stay put then. That heal. Wow, one, two, three. Feels like a bit of a waste now, huh? Don't really want to open the doors. Quite yet. Like, that could be disaster. So let's not do that. But I could go for, like, an early into the night scurry, which will get me in. Maybe go invisible. Go for a late massive boulder. These guys are melee. I don't know who, what the other enemies were. I can't remember. But if they're melee too, then this will be very simple for us. Very easy. Um, and then what we can do afterwards now is we can just basically go late on everybody else and just try and play some decent healing or damage abilities to just get us through. Um, so, yeah, just maybe even just playing Enhancement Field for uh, the top. Or maybe Hook Gun, see if we can get some positioning on a trap. I'm sure there'll be more um, hazardous terrain, right? Okay. All right, nope, just obstacles. All right, I was wrong. <laughs> okay. Well, at least we can push forward into the room now. And block off that so they have to go all the way around. No, in fact, he can't. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice that. That's completely blocked him in. Oof. That's quite rare for that to happen. Like, I don't think I often see that pattern. Like, where you can block off an enemy with just one hex like that. Oh, I'm not complaining. Just feels a little bit, a little bit random. Definitely want to use all of my ranged attacks against this guy. And I'm definitely not pulling because of this retaliate for. But that is absolutely what you want to do against these guys. A new new. Hey, hey, GKNY. How's it going, guys? How's it going to see you? Akuma Kurumi. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're doing well. There's only nine scenarios with vermelings. How would you even check that? Yeah, that's... Um, that's actually a really good tab, maybe, for me to put into my... Into my... Um, into my tool sheet. Maybe I'll do that. That's a really good idea. Like, if I just put next to each scenario what, like, enemies are included, it might be a bit spoilery, maybe. But, I mean, it's kind of spoilery already. It's meant for more for people who want to reference things maybe on their second playthrough or maybe they really want to reference some of it like they don't mind so much. That might be a really good idea. Hmm. Sorry, my thief. You've made yourself a spreadsheet? Nice. Yeah, I mean, I've got most of that information, but I don't have that bit, bit of information. That is missing from there. So maybe I'll add that, because that would be quite good, I think. That would be handy information, for sure. Unless, of course, uh, Island Wine wants to share with the class. Oh, 
stunned up there. Oh, I did do the aura again. Wargang Geek has a good thread on this, though. You to translate the numbers. Spoiler tagged. Let me have a quick look at this. Uh... Oh, this is more of like a written guide. Okay. Oh, some good information here, though. For sure. Um... Oh, I'm on my last card. Oh, I didn't even check this. I thought I had one more card in my hand or something. That was dumb. What a waste. This clear the way it's not going to light this either, is it? I haven't got no good clear the way here either. Nope. I can't even use clear the way. Ah. I messed up that kind of... Those few little turns there. Not massively. But I shouldn't have used the stamina potion if I was just going to short rest there. Or if I was going to invis there. Potentially what I could have done is I could have just used my cape instead. But I sort of ended up wasting that potion now. So what I should have done is used my cape. It's a little bit annoying to lose but it could be worse. All right. Let's go, Mind Thief. Actually, you might you might end up taking a hit from this guy. I'll fill in the back. You back there. You guys nice and low. On that. Probably just long rest on the crack cart now. Long rest here. And I could long rest to here, like, obviously, but there's really bad value to do so right now. So we will not do that. Um, we have a fairly good idea to try and do some extra damage to this guy. So we'll, we'll try that. 
Um, I go in. Ugh. Not the time to draw the blessed, though. Not the time to draw the blessed, chat. Pretty good explosive punch here. I don't think that's a three hex obstacle. I think that's three single hex obstacles. Wow. Lots of, lots of good times to use there, guys. Loads of great times twos. Um, I mean, ultimately, I'm going to heaving swing this guy through here, and then hopefully that'll be that. That'll be that. Um, nah. I just won't have the time. I just won't have the time to play it or the inclination to play it. That's my problem with backup ammunition is that I often find it's the first card that I burn because I don't play it very early. Not a lot of people play it quite early, but I never, I never do. It just ends up being a move three for a little while for me, and then ultimately it just doesn't make the cut. got innate pierce three these guys jeez okay we didn't get it that's okay would have been nice to get it but ultimately it's not gonna matter Now, that's how I like to handle a tight room, chat. Good way to handle a tight room. Oh, I went too early on this, though. Ugh. I never learn. I need to go on 74. Ah, uh, well, I guess I just use the whip. I just use the boots. It's fine. We can get away with it. Uh, probably long rest in a minute, so... I don't know, actually. Maybe not. Well, this room's pretty sizable. Maybe. Maybe not. Kind of don't want to leave that loot there, but also... Ugh. It's like a whole turn to go over there, and I'll be so far behind. When, you know, I'm on a long rest as well. Like, how far behind I would be from the rest of my team if I did that. I do have stun shot. So, we are in a good position to open the room in that respect. And I've got rock slide to open it. 
Is mine uh, loot five or more gold tiles? What is your personal quest, sir? Your battle goal? Have five or more total cards. That's fine. Kill a monster during... Oh, we've already done it. Four or more. Easy. Okay, so... 20... Let's just use that as a as a as a move to bottom. Not the best use of this card, but that's sometimes why you pick low initiative cards. Ooh. Oh, what a lovely rock slide room. Ooh, baby. Look at that. Would you look at that? I mean, that looks pretty good to me. That one's dead. That is one of the reasons why Stun and Wound is so good. Because essentially that just guarantees me two points of wound damage. Which is all you really want against something like a Living Spirit, right? This frost demon is going to have to go on a right track. Really? Oh, because each way had a trap. Right. Huh. Very nice. We're going to call it a night. Happy to see me better today. Have a good time finishing. Help him out. <laughs> Thanks, Professor. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. See you next time, man. Thanks for stopping by. I guess we get rid of Brain Leech. Well, actually, Hostile Takeover, because it's not great here. I think we're going to be getting some sweet loot. Some sweet, sweet loot in a minute. These guys are all going to move, though. That's a bit of a pain. They might move out of my nice cluster. Um, well, there would have been no open hexes for him. Actually, well... No, because he had to go through this trap here. Or this trap here. Yeah, there was no way that he could get even through pathing, right? Because there's a boulder here. So no. 
Like the other option would have been to go all the way around up through here because of the boulder there it didn't happen. And I think it was correct. Just unexpected. I, I honestly thought he was going to go around this way. Because of this trap, it made it so that both directions had a trap. So that was very fortunate for us. Yes, very annoying here. Still got our Invis cape, right? So I think we can now move into this room. Ooh, hello there. Oh, there's a chest. Uh, trying to work out which one to use the poison dagger on. Probably not you. A boulder under a spirit. Yeah, that's it. The, the secret boulder. The best kind of boulder. Maybe may as well attack to just try and get rid of a curse. There you go. Efficiency chat. Oh no, can he get me now? No! I suppose I could push him away. Oh. Worth. <sighs> what? Alright, I suppose so. But I don't like it. Mind Thief gonna love a loot too in that last room. If we could do it like here. Gotta make sure that we keep it, right? Um, oh, there's 10 gold there. Jeez. Um, I don't think we have any other loots, though. Well, that's a shame. Hmm. That's a real shame. Feels like a short rest, doesn't it? 
I need to get more gold here too. I need to get two parts. I need to get at least two parts of my crack up. That can be arranged, right? That could be arranged. Uh, although there's no space for me to boulder right now. That's not good. And I just lost my move four. No! Why? Oh, I guess we'll just use this as move five. Catch tool! Thank you so much, dude, for the resub. 13 months. That's very kind of you, sir. Welcome back. The quest continues. Really appreciate all your support, buddy. For all these uh all these months. That's very kind of you, sir. Welcome back. Hey, Dinoga. Do I long rest at all? You're about a third through the board game and not long rested once. I long rest a lot. Um But I long I only long rest basically uh, Well it's, see it's difficult to say when you should and shouldn't long rest. So typical situations where I long rest. So I would long rest in a situation where I'm facing no immediate threats. So there are no enemies that are immediately going to be attacking me. Like I could stay away from them or there's very few enemies. Like there's maybe one enemy. It's not that much of a problem. Like I could take the damage from one enemy or something. So there's very low level of threat at that period of time i would potentially long rest also i like to try and synchronize my long rests across all of my characters that's much easier to do playing solo than it is sometimes multiplayer though because when you're playing multiplayer people have different agendas they have different ideas about what they're trying to do so not always possible because also they're focusing maybe a bit more on their battle goal maybe they've got the short rest battle goal or maybe they've got another battle goal to get loot or something like that so maybe they're coming at the game at a slightly different tempo to you whereas when i play solo i'm playing all of the same characters at the same kind of uh, tempo if you like so i don't have to worry about that so before i open a room even if i say had even if i said had four cards left in my hand like i had two turns left i would either play those two turns out by literally just running backwards and forwards to just waste two rounds so that everybody is kind of ready to go or I would just at that point, you know, if I didn't want to waste that time, I would just long rest at that point. Um, kind of up to you how you want to do it. Uh, I also long rest much more on characters that have items that are refreshable items that are needed. So, Crack Heart really, really needs it, in my opinion. Really, really, really needs it for both the Hide Armor and the Boots of Striding. Cash Tool. You crazy fool. Thank you so much, dude. Five gifted subs. That is incredibly kind of you. Wow. Guards, crag hearts in chat, pog frogs, pog toads in chat. For cash tool, that is insanely kind of you, sir. Welcome, Akristor, Jankovic, Menez, Lenman, and Day Dallas. Make sure to thank cash tool in the chat that's incredibly kind of him to do so thank you buddy thank you thank you thank you it means a lot we are getting closer to our sub goal um which this month if we get to the sub goal then uh craig will do a entire scenario all by himself as chosen by you guys so if that's not an incentive i don't know what is because i would like to see him put his money where his mouth is because he does always just seem to swoop in and take the glory a lot of the time so if you do also have, you know, a Prime Gaming sub, use it here because you also enter into the loot roll every month, which is also a chance to win some game keys too, which is a nice way. So even if you're not going to use your Prime Gaming sub here, I just implore everyone to use their Prime Gaming sub because it's money that is otherwise going into Jeff Be Bezos' pocket. So you may as well give it to one of your favorite streamers. Right, so. As I was explaining about long resting. So what did we get to? We did the two, two other things that I did. 
Uh, maybe third time. Berenstain, thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub, dude. And Birdstorm as well. Thank you so much, guys. Very, very kind of you. Welcome to the adventuring party. I really appreciate the support. Um, so, yeah, what was the other? So, the third... Um, the third reason to long rest. There is, always, is a third reason to long rest. And that is when you very, very, very specifically cannot lose a certain card. Right? So, the main character that struggles with this is the Spellweaver. Because the Spellweaver, sometimes, sometimes you might be looking and you have Reviving Aether in your discard pile. And you're looking at it. And you might have, let's say, two other cards. And maybe one of the other cards is a really good card that you don't want to get rid of for next round. You might not want to get rid of that. So that's a little bit more situational. That's quite a rare case to long rest. But that can also come up. Also, sometimes you really want, like, your stun. So maybe you're on one health. But so the good example is you're on one health. You have Reviving Aether and another card in your discard pile, and you're on one health. So you cannot um, redraw if Reviving Aether was the card that you drew, right? So that's an, an example. And similarly, other situations like that can happen too, where you have like a stun that you really, really want, and you you don't want to, uh, to short rest to potentially burn it because you're on one HP, and that's the card you need to win. So there are certain situations like that. Thank you so much for the follow, Brambeard Gaming. I really appreciate it. Hey, guys, I recognize that name. How are you doing? I recognize you guys. You guys play Gloomhaven. I think you guys play with Isaac, right? Um, Amiva, thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub. I really appreciate it. Welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to the adventuring party. Hey, no problem, Mr. Noga. I'm always happy to talk about it because there was a. I did actually get. I, I get. Po I got posed the same question on my YouTube in my YouTube comments um, a few days ago because someone was someone was basically um, someone was basically asking me the question like because I, I I say in a lot of my guides like oh you should get this item or you should long rest at this period of time and they were like how often do you long rest because they like they like never long rest they're like I long rest like very very rarely. And I'm like, well, I long rest at least twice per scenario, usually on each character. And that's just because of timing. Like for me, I just, I don't know what it is, but I get very, the rhythm of, of how I play is you would have noticed it there, right? I kind of cleared this one room, had a situation here where I was like, maybe I push through, maybe I don't. Okay, I've got enough cards. Maybe I'll push through. I pushed through. But then what I did is I set myself up to have a really nice position to be able to long rest when I wasn't in any danger. So then I could go long rest on two of my people, one of my characters, one of my characters short rests, so then have to do something. But everybody else can long rest. That's really, really nice. The two characters that need to long rest get to. The other character can kind of do their thing and, and keep the enemy occupied. So just setting up situations, board situations, in which long resting is possible is also just really good. And that's just like, Messing around with invisibility and stuns just generally gets you to that point a lot of the time. Doing well, teaching Isaac the Gloomhaven sometimes does a traitor mechanic. <laughs> well, yesterday, we actually tried that for real, where I was the traitor and I was playing the crag cart and I had to try and stop chat from winning a scenario on easy and we played Burning Mountain and uh, I came quite close, but I did feel really bad at the end of it because all I did was wail on uh, Arvalani, who was playing the Tinkerer, which I felt really bad for because he basically couldn't run away from me because he didn't have good enough initiative or good enough movement to be able to run away from my rumbling advance constantly. And I just kept just like, I just boxed him in with Rock Slide and then rumbling advanced him over and over again. Um... So I did feel kind of bad at the end of it. It was a fun exper experience, but I felt bad because all we were doing was I was basically just bullying a tinkerer for an hour. <laughs> That's what it was almost. Um, so in situations like this, I'll also... In situations like this, I will short rest because the scenario is nearly over as well. I also don't have to worry about preserving stamina. So I'll short rest here because although I am safe to long rest, 
I'm also at the point where the scenario is nearly nearly won, right? So we're just going to do that. Uh, Ameva, thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub as well. If I didn't shout you out, I do really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's very kind. Thank you for all the subs, guys. That was crazy. And a level two hype train. Look at that. That's fine. Ooh, the big attack. The big scary attack. That's not the one. Right. Let's get some loot piles. Is that 10 gold over there? Oh, it's 10 gold. That does technically count as two gold piles. I would I would I would hope it should do. Guess we're about to find out. Yeah, good. It did. Okay. So, really, we could just do the, the big loot too is coming up. We just need to get into the right position for it, which we are now in the right position. It does feel a bit greedy, though, to get all of the loot on the Mind Thief, right? <laughs> Does feel slightly greedy. Knock, knock. Mm, a little bit naughty. Hey, it's up, up. Oh, I've already got. I've already got him poisoned. Don't need to worry about the poison then. Um. I guess. Could I go back and get loot here? Oh, they're all on obstacles. Ugh. That means the crack cart's got to go back, really. If anybody. And, uh... That's not going to happen, because I've just burnt clear the way. So... Hmm. That's okay. I'm sure we'll just figure it out. I'm sure we'll figure it out. To be honest, I might just do the loot too now. And then we'll brain leech him. It seems good. Mind Thief can go back. Yeah, the Mind Thief could go back. We could do a loot too with the Mind Thief now, I suppose. Maybe not. You know, or not. I wish you could kind of optionally choose with loot, like how much loot you could pick up. Like it's like this could be like loot up to two. To at least like allow you to maybe be a little bit more diplomatic and be like, ah, actually... Let's leave, like, that one chest, right? Because somebody might, like, rock in now and be like, No! I need to get a chest for my battle goal. Please! Please don't loot it. And they're like, Oh, I'm really sorry. Like, it's a loot too. Yoink. The Doomed Compass. It's a nice item. Doomed Compass is one of those items that I would never buy, but having it for free... It's actually like quite cool, quite usable. Yeah. 
It's like, I don't think I ever, like, I've never, like, bought it in the shop for a character. But whenever I've had it, because I've found it, I've been, I've been, I've liked it. I, like, I haven't sold it. I've used it. Uh, okay. Well, I don't think we have much to do now, do we? I think we are just going to chill here. I mean, I could have got some XP on the Tinkerer there, but we don't want to level the Tinkerer. So we will not do that. The spirits seem calm and the lurkers have retreated. You've looted what you can. For you forgot that one. What is the effect? It is um, to get your feet on force an enemy to do a move two action with you controlling the actions. So you can walk an enemy into a trap. You can walk them into an AOE before you do it, which is quite nice. So it's quite good on characters like the Tinkerer. Um, it's not so great on the Mind Thief, I suppose, but Tinkerer is quite good. Crackheart wouldn't be too bad either. Spellweaver. Like, just characters that might have an empty slot, small item slot, that you could just use to position enemies a little bit better. You take one last look at this strange island and its impaled ship, then do exactly that. Why don't I want to level the Tinkerer? You ask because you think you're having issues as you level everyone when I can. So, this is specifically about me trying to keep the game hard for myself. So, um, I... Well, actually, it's not actually about making the keeping the game half as well. It kind of isn't. It kind of isn't. So, it's I'm basically trying to min max the the scenario level system a little bit. So, when I get new characters, if I keep my Tinkerer, which I may do, if I keep my Tinkerer and I have two new characters come in, they will come at like the prosperity level, right? So, if I have a very high Tinkerer, my 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 difficulty level is going to start much higher because my average party level is going to be higher. Whereas if I keep one party member lower, when my two new ones come in, they'll be much closer. So then it will be um, like the difficulty curve will be much more like realistic, if you like, or, or much more in line with the party. Because the Tinkerer does not get stronger with levels either. So it doesn't get better cards, really. So it's like just not great idea to level the, the Tinkerer. Because you just you're never really getting better. You're just making the game a bit harder. So it's kind of like a little bit of way of of, of I'm min maxing the, the the difficulty system a little bit by trying to keep one character low. If I was playing multiplayer, I would absolutely not play in this way because you just want to have fun and get your cards and play your character. But when you're playing solo and you're playing, you know, you're like a particular playthrough, then it's a consideration. Like I do it, and I know that Gripe does it as well. Do I know what classes I will choose next? Yes, I will have uh, Eclipse, Saw, and Sun. Actually, a really good... I actually think that's a really good party, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. It's a pretty Tink-specific optimization. Yeah, that's kind of true, too. Yeah, you, that you wouldn't want to necessarily do that with every character. Like, you wouldn't want to keep, like, always one character back. It is more to do with the Tinkerer in general. Just being a bit underwhelming. If the Tinkerer had better level ups, then yeah, you probably would play it um, more for the XP. Also, it's it kind of happens naturally as well because the Tinkerer's like, is best. Cards often don't give XP at times. Like, you just want to play Stun Shot a bunch. You just want to heal and stuff. Like, you want to play like Reviving Shock in Hearts Before. Like, you... You do eventually play like net shooter and ink bomb and stuff, right? But you're not you're not always playing those cards. So like the Tinkerer's role is often just to keep everybody else alive and going. It, at least that's how I play the Tinkerer. I don't play it super aggressively. Whereas um if you did play the Tinkerer super aggressively, you would level it up pretty quick. If you did go all in on like ink bomb and net shooter and stuff. All right, nice. Double level ups. All right, let's level up our Tinkra, which we didn't really want to do, but there you go. I mean, we have actually kind of kept relatively level, to be honest. Despite my best efforts, we're still level five. <laughs> we're still in line with everybody else.
But we get disintegration beam, right? Is this disintegration beam level five? Oh, yes. My favorite Tinkerer card. My absolute favorite Tinkerer card. So, really, really, we're picking Disintegration Beam here for this most of the time. Like, a high level of difficulty, this is what you're playing. But if you could get two Living Spirits or Imps with this, that is great value, and you would take it. So... Like, Disintegration Beam to kill two, like, really high shield, low health things. Great. But uh, but really, the bottom of this is is really why you're taking it. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. So, why this is so good is because now we have, like, a double control turn on 20 initiative. So we can go stun shot one thing run up and disarm another thing so on the first turn of the game we've taken two enemies out entirely and that's like really big because then we can start to set up our other characters generate any elements that we want get the mind weak wide weakness going you know it gives you that little bit of time to just get around under your belt to set up and then once you're there you're kind of away so it can give you that double control turn. Similar to how, like, Mind Thief can give you Perverse Edge, Hostile Takeover is your first turn, which is a very strong opening turn, too. Like, that, it gives you a, an incredibly strong opening turn. Noxious Vials is actually not, like, a terrible card. Um, a bit of a combo piece card on the top there. Like, with certain, you know, um, certain small items, this is, like, busted. You can just give them, like, you know, earrings back can be pretty crazy, but it does specifically require you to have those kinds of things. Whereas this is just always good. This is sometimes good. So, um, pretty easy choice. It's like a slightly worse level two mind thief. Yep. Where one of our, where both of our attacks, no, one of our attacks doesn't do any damage. So one of our things doesn't do any damage. At least hostile takeover does damage. Okay, we'll get rid of that. We've also done really badly, I will say, with this playthrough with battle goals. But that is kind of par for the course when you're playing deadly difficulty. If you're playing deadly difficulty, I don't really encourage people to focus too much on them. If you get them done, you get them done. But if you don't get them done, don't fret about it. Don't, like, worry about it too much. It keeps the game interesting, in my opinion, too. Because once your decks get super, super good, then it... Obviously, becomes quite a bit easier. Consistently hitting those uh, plus damage numbers. Uh, level six, the best level for the Mind Thief. So, we have Corrupting Embrace and we have Dark Frenzy. You want both of these cards. So, we will be taking, at level seven, we'll be coming back and taking the one we don't take. It's always a little bit interesting to see which one of these you take first first that's always kind of like the hmm which one do you take so sometimes i don't like to take dark frenzy first because i would like to kind of generate the dark and the poison and then hit them with like a big dark frenzy top so you know use for example hostile takeover and corrupting embrace together then use a big dark frenzy to get like that big attack on the top but ultimately most of the time you're using ice to stun things like when ice is available, you're generally using it to stun. Like, that's what you're using it for. So, it's it's kind of rare that you would want both the ice and the, the dark on the top of Dark Frenzy. Uh, or at least at this difficulty level. Unless you're fighting a boss, I guess. If you're fighting a boss, you're going to be going for that. Or a big elite, maybe. If you want to just try and get it down really, really quickly. But the bottom of Dark Frenzy is really, like, the, the power level of the card. The bottom of Dark Frenzy is just nuts. So a move and a free attack along with so for example now you could do like perverse edge like your first turn could be perverse edge mind's weakness and then your second turn could be dark frenzy frigid apparition move into position attack something else stun something else like that's really good that's a really good sort of two turn sequence and um yeah i think i've flip-flopped on these two before i think in my guide i actually go for corrupting embrace first at the moment also because the top is quite good with the mind's weakness, of course. 
Um, but to be honest, I've already put the jump on Cranium Overload. So I might just go Dark Frenzy first this time. Because I've already enhanced jump. If I didn't have jump enhanced here, I might have made a different decision there. But I, I feel like that's probably about right. Um, it might be time to get rid of the old uh, feedback loop. This is where things start to get a bit scary with your um, initiative, though. Like, you kind of need to keep a late initiative just for the, the invis. And I don't have that anymore. Do I intend to equip this integration beam? Yes, of course. Thank you for reminding me. I might have forgotten. <laughs> um, that's the problem with dropping feedback loop, is that then you're operating basically just on early initiatives, which really makes Into the Night much worse. Much, much worse. I think we'll try it. We'll see how we go. But I'm going to have that in my mind. That if... It, it basically stops us from being able to do the the late go. Unless we play the Mind's Weakness. But sometimes you just want to have the Mind's Weakness up the whole time. So, we'll see. It's going to test my discipline with my um, discarding of the Mind's Weakness for sure. Um, oh, new advantage rules are in, right? Let's just make these quite good. I think we'll just go for the plus two, though, for now. All right, very good, very good. Right, city encounter. Right, what's... What option are we going to go for, chat? Option one or option two? So, it was truly a marvelous night full of alcohol and fuzzy memories. You're heading back to your rooms in high spirits when you take a wrong turn into an alley and trip over a mutilated corpse. What's all this then? You look up to see a city guard walk into the alley, annoyed by all the noise you are making in your revelry. Before you can react, he draws his sword. You! What did you do? You look and see that due to the fall, your clothes are now covered in blood. The guard clearly thinks you are responsible for the man's death. This might just take a serious turn for the worst. This night just took a serious turn for the worst. Do we do our best to explain that the man was like this when we found him? Option one or be option two, panic and kill the guard, then dispose of both corpses. We have a fairly decent reputation. That's all I'm going to say, chat. We have a fairly decent reputation right now, I believe. I'm going to get screwed here, aren't I? Oh, no. Just about. We did it. What? It wasn't me, governor. It wasn't me. I didn't even, I didn't even know there'd been a, a, a bit of murder. Not me. I was nowhere nearby. Nowhere, nowhere at all. In fact, I was, um, I was, um, I was, I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was in a pub. Yeah, I was in, uh, I was in the sleepy light. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You ask anybody, you ask anybody there, they'll say, yeah, we saw, we saw Craig. We saw him. He was, uh, he was there. He was, um, uh, you know, he, he was, he was drinking and, and, uh, he was definitely not talking about, uh, murdering anyone or, uh, killing anybody or, or anything like that. He, he was, he was being very, um, very respectful, very, very respectful and, uh, and just uh, enjoying his drink. That's, that's what he's doing. Honestly, Governor. Honestly, that's, that, that's, that's the honest truth. The honest truth. You believe me? Good. Oh. Well, it's the truth. It is the truth. Nothing to do with me. But apparently, 
That's not good enough for this guy, eh? Good enough for you, not good enough for him. I don't like this. Attempts to explain yourself just seem to make the situation... What? Come on! No! You've got... You gotta investigate! More guards show up and everyone eyes you suspiciously. Luckily, your weapons don't match the man's wounds and the guards let you go. But they do so with a shot. Well, if his head isn't bashed in with a rock, it wasn't me, was it? I've only got my fists and my rocks. How is that possible? Upon closer inspection, the man's wounds are consistent with large rocks. No. No. I think you'll find no. I mean, Master Boulder does have wound on it now, explain itself. Um, 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 well, I, no, I, I, I lent that, I lent that to somebody else. I lent that to, um, Steve. Yeah, Steve. That's, that's who had it last. Steve. I reckon if you go, Go to the sleeping line and ask for, ask for Steve. He, he borrowed it from me, like, a, a week ago. I haven't, I haven't seen him for a week. No, 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 no massive boulder here. No, no, no massive boulder here, no. no. Right. No, I, 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 I lost it. I, well, I didn't, I, I didn't lose, I lose, I gave it to Steve. That reminds me though, I should probably ask for it for it back, really, shouldn't I? But uh Yeah. Definitely um definitely uh Dave. No, not Dave, Steve. Steve that yeah, Steve Steve. Steve. Hmm. Suspicious, I think. Did a lot of talking there, didn't he? Know what they say. You do have rocky residue on your hands, but it wasn't for throwing anything here. <laughs> He's just, he has just come from a mission. You know, he has been out in the field. So. He has been out in the field. You... He's been in this scenario. I mean, I personally have never met this Steve, but, you know, I mean, I'm sure there is a Steve that lives in Gloomhaven. Okay. So, <laughs> so next quest. So we did another side scenario. Nice. So we're making progress towards this. Got to do our temple. Let's do our temple before we forget. Um, what else do we need to do here? We need to buy something. Do we need to buy something? Who's got the doomed compass? You've got the doomed compass. I actually think it would be better on someone like Tink. So I might sell it here. And I might actually buy it. Despite what I said earlier where I would never buy it. I think I'm going to buy it. <laughs> no! 50 gold? Oh, of course. Alright, maybe not. Maybe next time. Alright, we need to get 50 gold. I thought I had loads of money. What, what happened to all of the money that I had? Oh, I enhanced this, didn't I? Uh, enhance that. That's where all the money went. Okay. I did have money. There's always a Steve. Yeah, you know. In every... And I'm pretty sure in every uh, tavern, there's always a Steve. 
yeah, it's crazy money. Like, to buy it for 50 gold, that's... I mean, the way to look at it, though, is that if you could just walk an enemy into a trap, that is like a free, you know, six to eight damage. Like, so as an item that just does that, is that worth 50 gold? Could be argued that maybe it is, especially on a higher difficulty because the traps are worth so much more. Right, I think we're going to have to go and do the actual crypt, aren't we? Hang on a minute. We don't have to go do that, do we? Hang on. Do I have to go and do decaying crypt now? Oh. Do I have to do this? Do I have to do Inox Encampment now? Have I locked some scenarios off or something? Please tell me I don't have to do this scenario. <laughs> I really do not want to do this scenario. No. Please. Anything but this scenario. This integration beam in. Thank you. I was, was going to forget again. Uh, but... Yeah, it's either the crypt or some bloody Enox murder. Yeah. I mean, I'll do the crypt, but I don't think this is the... Is this linked to anything? I'm going to have to check. I'm going to have to check. I'm going to have to check my tool sheet. Does this link to anything? What is it? Uh, decaying crypt. Doesn't link to anything. Oh no, it does. It does. Yes, it does. It links to Gloomhaven Warehouse. Yes. Okay. But does that... Yes, because then it gives us the party cheap, but it's checks Harris plans. Yes. Okay. The K Crypt it is. Do Decay Encrypt. Why not Inox Encampment? It is a really, really difficult scenario. Um for like even on normal difficulty level i would say like hard or it's just really not a very achievable scenario i think at this difficulty level so i'm trying to avoid it it's also just not a very fun one in my opinion it's a very grindy scenario and i, I just don't really want to do that um right chat what do we do what do we do i mean i know what i would do in this situation but what do you guys want to do You are walking down a road where the sound of many wings pulls your gaze to the sky. I'm getting all blocked up again now. <laughs> Above you, you see a large flock of red birds flying southward. At that height, you figure a well-aimed arrow could bring one of them down to make a nice meal. All right, chap. A large flock of red birds. Reds. Reds birds red birds red <laughs> hey little tom finally catching me live and watching my stuff since you started playing gloomhaven and you chose mind thief for my early guide for that character seriously helped you made a great opus my rng awesome dude well welcome to the live stream thank you so much for, uh, for a nice comment and jumping on. I hope you have fun. Enjoy the stream. Did you seriously vote for one? 59%? Are you kidding me?
You pull back your bow and take aim. The instant you loose the arrow, however, you notice something odd about the birds. They are much farther away than you realize and much bigger. The arrow misses. Yeah, boy. A little bit spicy. Don't want to make things spicy, but it gets their attention. As the flock turns and descends towards you, you realize you just shot at a group of drakes. Oh, because birds that are red might not be birds ah nice you run for cover among the trees but are hit by that acidic spit a number of times in the process you have been muddled each character starts the scenario suffering two damage oh no who could have seen that nobody could have seen that one coming oh what is life without a little bit of interest? oh well the cultists have clearly marked this crypt as a spot of trouble for them. Perhaps clearing the place out will put you in their good graces. Or maybe you're just hoping to find a big stash of treasure, untouched by looters' hands. Maybe, Matuka. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Well, next time that won't happen because, again, chat will just troll me. But still. Once you arrive... The smell makes you regret your decision more than anything else. It's not the fact you've had it up to here with exploring old decrepit ruins. Oh, jeez. It's not the undead horrors shambling and moaning in the shadows. It's the smell. The smell of death and soullessness and rotting flesh. Ooh. I don't think I've played this scenario in a very long time. This is going to be interesting. Um, sure. Pretty easy. Number of items. A number of items one is also incredibly easy for this character, so. We'll do that. Reveal a room tile. Uh, possible. We have it in this, so sure. Just try and remember to do that. Uh, and not become exhausted. Sure, easy. Right, we did put disintegration beam in, didn't we? Yep. Yeah. Okay, assaults in. Yep. Yeah. And dark frenzy is in. Let's go. I wanted a challenge, right? Well, yeah, I guess so. Start with a small disadvantage. Last time you didn't shoot and you did regret it. You didn't notice the color. <laughs> Only do red stuff. <laughs> no. You're glad you're catching some of the early scenarios you've played of your party. You're the only one who had never played Gloomhaven before we started our campaign. So you're like seeing how others tackle these scenarios. <laughs> yeah, I imagine like, um, like, especially if you're playing with Isaac, I imagine that he... I mean, when I, I I played once with Isaac, we did a sponsored stream. We did like a full digital, like a uh, it was like a little fun stream with me, Isaac, and um, uh, Craig, the lead developer of uh, of digital, and also uh, Julian, who's uh, Asmodee uh, Digital, and um, that was that was fun. And I, Isaac, we were just like playing on like I think we're playing on like hard difficulty. And, uh, like, Isaac was pretty good at not, like, you know, not, like, saying anything. Like, it was really fun to play with, actually. Because he was just kind of, like, was just playing the game, like, you wouldn't, if you hadn't, if you didn't know that he had obviously designed the game, you would have just thought it was a guy enjoying the game. You know, just, like, hanging out and playing the game. Um, but it must be kind of hard sometimes for him to maybe switch off a little bit. Like, I'm, I'm sure that he's now thinking about like other future projects so he's probably pushed some of that information out of his brain now you know he's not really not you know got every scenario memorized whereas i expect for a period of time he could probably tell you um maybe not so much anymore because he's focusing on frosthaven but that was always cool he let you walk into a trap chest in the second scenario with a hey man you do you see exactly like but that's good that's what you want you know you want uh you want people to make their own mistakes especially if someone's new to the game you know you don't want to tell them what's the perfect way to uh, to do something um 
Oh, crap. There's these two guys here. Holy moly. These guys are the scariest, so we'll be dealing with them first. Living, bo living bones are one of the hardest enemies to deal with, especially at high levels. People don't... that Often people think that, like, oh, living bones, they're like, you know, the basic enemy, right? Like the skeletons, the basic enemy. But actually, living bones is are actually some of the hardest enemies to deal with. Mainly just because of the fact that they've got these huge attacks with these multi-targets. So if you don't stun them every round, pretty much, this guy is going to do a ridiculous amount of damage. So I need to kill these guys as soon as possible. Like, they are absolutely the priority. Also, these guys have quite slow movement. You see they're already moving too. I could probably just get away from them for a little period of time. And Rock Slide is going to do a great job at kind of blocking them in too, so... We will be we will be focusing on these guys first to try and uh, to try and get those. Hey, Kanda! Welcome, raiders. Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for the raid. How's it going, buddy? Good to see you. A welcome, welcome, welcome. Shield makes anything a pain in the ass. Multi-target too. Yeah, shield is also a bit of a problem for this, for sure. Um. Let us let us get these out. You guys been playing Gloomhaven, Kanda? That will do it. Like that. And then these guys are gonna have to go this way, which is kind of slow. I don't think I need that card back. Not quite yet. So this might be a good time to use net shooter. Um, but also Disintegration Beam could be very good here too. So I could go Disintegration Beam here. Net shoot to these two. But I really need to start focusing on these guys over here. As I move to again. We will get you, I think. Get that poison on there, because... Poison just negating shield. Always nice to get poison on an enemy that can heal as well. So these guys have a heal. So getting poison on them is quite nice because it just blocks that annoying heal that might come up at some point. Just completed Arcane Library. One more Forest Imp and Mind Thief Retires. Nice. I always find that one quite a hard one to do. I had that on my... I had that on my Music Note character in Tabletop. Imagine that. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I 
I guess we don't actually have to kill enemies here. We could just ignore these, but I think I'm just going to go for them anyway. Not bad. Um, probably rumbling advance next turn then, eh? Skeletons meditate to achieve tranquility. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I would call it that. Oh, a little bit more annoying than that. They are due to flip their 20 here. Do I risk the 20 flip? That's the question. Because to be honest, I could probably kill them with this and this. I could just do a default attack too. With the poison, I'm at least getting one point of damage in. Plus, you know, maybe I draw a plus one. I could probably kill with the Mind Thief regardless. So maybe that won't even matter. Um... They're quite far away, so I I'm not too worried about that. This guy, however, is close. So he is going to hit us. Is there, a, is there a hex in the corner there? There is. That could be a nice hex. All right, I like that. Hmm, 74. Okay. I think, unfortunately, we are going to be hit by this guy. All right. Well, that might change things a little bit now. Hmm. That may change things. I think I want some rock slide shenanigans, maybe. He's wounded, it changes everything. Yeah, it does. Very much does. But also... <sighs> Boy, so I can avoid everything except for this one anyway. Maybe we can do a bit of damage here. I don't fight, mind the Mind Thief taking a, a big hit here. Because we have the Invis. We can heal back. It's not that bad. Could be a lot worse, you know? Yeah, there you go. It's, it's pretty much dead. Right, we need to keep getting gold on the Tinkerer so we can get that 50 gold now. So it's five. Ten more piles. So I want to force them through the difficult terrain, really. That's that's the, the aim here. That's the name of the game here, chat. That is the name of the game.
Huh. All right. A little bit annoying because obviously they can kind of get at us. Wanted to try and kill them with reviving shot. You're happy for the tink, pulling great crits, but also sad knowing those were his only blesses. It's only downhill from here. <laughs> it can only get worse. I think we are going to have to clear this room. Don't usually like to have to clear this room. Like, in a way, we could have ignored these guys that just gone on. And the scenario is kind of implying... Well, it actually says kill all revealed enemies. So actually, we would have to clear it. That's fine. Interesting that it says kill all revealed enemies. So that makes me feel like... There's some extra room or something. Is that... Oh, there's two doors. Right. That'll be why. Okay. Because I guess it's here. So we could go one way or the other way. I got you. Okay. Yeah, that was a little bit weird wording. But that does make... Uh, that does actually make sense. I didn't realize there was two doors. That's why I was confused for a minute there. I was like... But yeah, there's two doors. Give me the loot. Yeah. I'm guessing there's an easier way and a, and a harder way. I've probably chosen the harder way by accident. That usually seems to be the case. So we'll see. My experience of this is usually that I accidentally choose the wrong, the hard way. Uh. <laughs> yeah, <boy. laughs> A bit spicy. Um. Open both doors for the spicy play. No. <laughs> no. And maybe on lower difficulty I consider it. Maybe on lower difficulty I'd consider it. The challenge mode. You guys have already screwed with me enough, alright? Give me that stupid road event. See, this is an awkward turn, right? Really, I want a long rest because I want my items back. So I will do that, and I will tank it here if I have to. But I hope I don't have to. What have we got?
Tink with the attack six. Ooh. Ow. Um, hostile takeover seems really good in this scenario. We don't have anything with retaliate that we've seen yet, but is there like living spirits in this too? Living spirits. Living bones. Living corpses. I don't think there's anything with retaliate. Therefore, like... Fearsome Blade loses a fair bit of value then. Plus, the trap situation is probably not going to be very much because there's no archers. So, let's get rid of that. I might be wrong. I might open this door and there's a bunch of archers and a bunch of traps. But, I'm going to go into the impression that that's probably not going to be the case. Okay, we'll strengthen up so that we're good and ready to go for the next room. Now, we should just be able to run in nicely. Again, backup ammunition. Ugh, just not feeling it. Maybe I'll force it. I feel like clear the way is probably not going to be very usable. Might be a bit of a mistake, but we'll see. Get rid of Flamethrower there. Okay, good. So we need to open a door, so we'll we'll do that and we'll go invisible. Any of our moves, I'll do. All right, moving the door. Ooh, that. It's a lot of skeletons and traps. God damn it! Eight damage poison traps as well. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. why you like to keep push cards in your deck i usually do too but i got a bit greedy on the assumption that there probably wasn't that many in this scenario i was wrong just some friendly friends hanging out just some dudes hanging some skelly bros. Nothing to worry about here. Nothing to concern yourself with. Ready for the surprise disintegration beam, though. Psh you ready for it?
I'm not going to do it. I'm probably going to unstable upheaval. Pew, pew. Pew. That gives me time with everybody else, which is nice. Um, No! Shield and heal, not this turn. Any turn but this turn. Oh, I don't want to be next to you, do I? Whoops. Well, I've done that now, though. Um... Damn it. Ooh. Not you, sir. Not today. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. The skeleton med meditation. This is why skeletons are annoying. Because they could just hang around on the board forever. Just don't go away. Why won't you die? I mean, I don't get as much as I would like, but I do stun this guy, which is the most one of the most important ones, but also these for the following round, which is still pretty good value. I've had better, I've had worse. I'd better, I'd better had worse. Um, right, what's the line of sight like? This guy's not getting anything. This guy's getting both of you two. Which is not very cool. I'll, uh, I'll give this one. Why won't you die? You ask the dead thing. Okay. Why won't you stay dead? Like not moving and stuff. Right. Uh, I don't know. You, I reckon. Very respectable. Mm. 
Didn't really think this one through. I was going to attack this, but that doesn't seem worth it anymore. Now I'm going to have this advantage. And I definitely gave myself up a point of damage there. I should have done that first, but I just... I don't know why, but I had it set in my mind I was still going to attack this, but that was definitely not the right thing to do. Now we got wound up on two things, which is at least pretty decent. Got some heaving swing opportunities. Pretty crappy initiative, though. Oh, now is the time for the short rest, I think. Now is the time for the short rest. Seven, so I'll be going down to six. Seven. So I have an odd number of cards. So really, I do want to discard the wise weakness here. Bit of an annoying one to lose, but could have been a lot worse. The reason why we do that is that sometimes you want to have you want to have an, an an even number of cards in your hand, right? So that you've got a certain number of turns. So. Sometimes you discarding the mice weakness doesn't really matter because you're going to end up with an odd number of cards anyway. But if you can end up with an even number of cards, that gives you an extra round. So those are the rounds to maybe target discarding it. Not required for like super, super, um, you know, amazing play, but can help a lot. Sometimes can be the difference. Nice. Great draws. Great draws. Oh, what's he doing? Attacking for three? I could take a hit on three. Just to get that loot. I'll take three damage for some loot. That's a trade-off I'm willing to take. Craig's a greedy little rock monster. How many powers is that this scenario? He's doing pretty well, right? Uh, he's on 20 gold. So that's four. Oh, I might actually play backup ammunition. What the hell? Because it's convenient. Hooray! Oh, I remember this one now. I just didn't remember the lead up to this, but I remember this final room very well. Three. Five. Four. Let's go here, shall we? 
but attacking on you. Hey, Brambeard. Thank you so much for the sub, dude. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the adventuring party. Glad to have you with us. That's awesome, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the adventuring party, my friends. You got 33 gold today on Craig with your friend group and you play on normal. That was fun. 11 piles looted. Oof. Nice. See, one thing when you play like on increased difficulty like this, you do get gold really fast, which is kind of... It's nice, but in a way, I almost wish we could balance the game independent of the gold values. If someone's like... I know if Myth is watching... I know that this is basically kind of like Deadly is almost like what Myth's mod was and Myth's kind of, um, well, the increased level is at least. Um, he had the additional monsters too. But what I would also be interested in is maybe having the amount of gold given reduced a little bit. Because again, you can get very powerful very quickly, like when you play on increased difficulty too. Like you get a one good scenario, you know, you could walk away with hundreds of gold per character and just be like get whatever enhancement that i want and then the game maybe starts to become easy again so perhaps it would be a good idea to to have a mod or an option to maybe scale the gold down so that it's you don't get quite as rich as as fast that'd be cool i was really enjoying the stream and you needed those craggy modes everybody does everyone needs craggy modes I think I have to heal myself here, right? Hmm. Treasure chests. Reach the treasure room. Kill revealed enemies. Interesting that we don't actually need to... Uh... Don't actually need to loot the chest. One, two, one, two. Ah, yeah, they got no chance. Not even close. I mean, I want a long rest next turn, so maybe I just chicken out. So I could long rest here now. Long rest here. Like, this is what I mean. Like, we're in relative safety here. It's very unlikely that we get we get got. Only problem that we have is we have to kind of go invis here. Like, this is this is what we, we kind of have to do. Which is fine, because we've got it. So it doesn't really matter. We'll probably be long resting next turn on the Mind Thief, I think. Just in case we do need to block, but I don't think so. No, nope, we'll be fine. And just keep hurting this guy. We'll go invisible again. And then we long rest next turn while we're nice and safe. And let these guys start to crowd the door. Then we go for the big massive boulder. Ooh. Yes. Yes. 
Perfect. Perfect, because really you want to do it to this guy. Probably this guy, and oh, maybe this one as well, or maybe this one, this one. All right, Crater's going to be pretty good. Heaving swing could work. Say goodbye to Forceful Storm, maybe. It's a nice XP gaining, though. It's very good for XP gain. Mm. I think I need Crater just for the movement. Yeah, okay, I'll get this. It would be some good XP, though. I don't think you've ever seen a more perfectly crowded doorway. It's lovely. Well, my luck will now be that they somehow go before me on the initiative and I don't get to, get to utilize it. <laughs> that will be, like, my curse. Right, so one, two, three, four, five. So when we discard one, we'll be down to four, five, six. So we'll still have six cards. So we don't need to discard the mice weakness. It does depend on whether or not we want to go late, though, at any point. Um, which we may want to, but I'm hopeful that we're going to do a lot of damage over the next couple of turns. So I don't think we necessarily need to do that. So we'll just long rest. Um, so we've also got a really good ink bomb with piercing bow as well. That's looking pretty nice don't want to steal uh crack Heart's thunder though like come on we've been planning this for ages we've been planning it for so long maybe if i go in a little bit later it won't be quite as bad or if i go in with like stun shot crank bow There we go. Don't feel quite as nasty. One, two, three. There we go. May as well go to the other side and open the door for funsies. Oh, uh, well, not really my idea of fun, but, you know. <laughs> oh, I guess I should have stunned this guy, actually, for the wound on someone else, but... Oh, perfect. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. On the last turn of your play, you ran to the space next to the door just to scare everyone. You have to ask everyone how many cards they have left first as well. How many cards does everyone have? Feel like you could go a couple more rounds? Well, how about another six? And then sit whack open the door. Take that. Um I don't think we're gonna go in Oh well actually the loot one though. Oh no, we're gonna do a loot two. It's fine. How much healing do you have left yet? This is where, like, you're that you're that one player who has the battle goal, open a door, and every other door has been opened, and you're like... <sighs> but, I mean, I, I really want to do my battle goal, guys. I really want my check mark. I really want my perk point. Please. Don't you dare open that door. But I really want my perk point. It's only fair. Ooh. Oh. Yes. Okay. Nobody move. You're not allowed to move. 
Those are the rules. Nobody's allowed to move. You got that? No moving. Oh, yeah. It's Tink's time to shine. Second skin. Interesting item, actually. I've never found a character who really, really loves it. Like, there's always something else. It's still an interesting item. Here we go. Oh. The dream. The absolute dream. This is what you this is what you play for as a tinker. We've got to zoom in and get this. Which, which angle do we want? We want, the, want the reverse angle. See them all die. There we go. Beam them. <laughs> Oh, yes. Nice. That is what you play Tinkerer for. Wow. So cool. Oh no. Careful now. There's a lot of loot to pick up. There's a lot of loot to pick up. You love the item on that chest? It saves so many perks or it, it just does that. No survivability, but killing stuff is the best CC out there. Yeah, it allows you to kind of like change your perk builds but it's it's a bit weird right because you might not get it at the right time it's kind of like you'd get it on a brand new character but often i find myself just wanting to go for cloak of invisibility instead but it's an it's an interesting item i like that it opens up a slightly different build order but the problem is is that at max level it doesn't do a lot except for a couple of characters who don't you can't get rid of their minus ones that's the problem like perks are sometimes easy to come by and you can get multiple perks, but you can only have one chest slot. And that's the trick. Like the fact that you could only have one chest slot, but you could earn multiple perks is kind of like the, the push-pull. Like, it really depends on where, when you get it and how far along you are and things like that. Like it's, it's kind of weird. Yeah, there's there's a, there's some good characters who can use it. I actually I think I use it a fair bit on on Cthulhu. I think I use Cthulhu. Um, but the thing is, you don't really want to. Um, like I said, like the thing is, is that you can get perks that can kind of just do the same thing, and uh, for a lot of characters. And yes, you could spend those perk points on something else, but. In my experience, like I can generally get quite a lot of perks, like especially if I play at low level just difficulty. Like it's not hard to get perks. So, and and you already get one chest slot. So it's a, it's a hard trade off, especially when someone dangles an invisibility cape in front of you at level one. Like I think that, like it's an item that would be really interesting if it was maybe gotten a little bit earlier. It doesn't have to be necessarily like immediately at the beginning of the game because maybe then it would be maybe a bit too good but maybe not maybe it'd be fine if you got it immediately but there are other items that are a bit too good that you get a bit too quick i really think that a rebalance of like items in general like when you get them and how you get them would be interesting like if cloak of invisibility instead of it being an item that there's two in the shop and everybody could buy right from the get-go for like 20 gold 
Would it not be interesting if it was an item that you could only get one copy of and you can only get it from a chest? And this chest is in, let's say, a side scenario like that you get four or five scenarios in. Like you still get it fairly early. I'm not going to say that you get it like really late, but you get it at a different time. And then at that point, maybe you've bought a chest slot item that you really like and you've been using that for a while. So maybe you change your play style up. Just like things like that, that I think are quite interesting. Like Guildmaster was good for that because Guildmaster actually introduces items at different times. So when you're playing it naturally, you actually find yourself not leaning on certain items so much. The big one being Iron Helm. So Iron Helm is not available in Guildmaster immediately. You have to unlock it quite late on, um, which means that as a tank, you're, you're actually like using like Amulet of Life, Necklace of Teeth. You're using these other interesting tanking items or other interesting helmet items rather than just being like, oh, I get Iron Helm and I don't really have to worry about thinking about that again, right? Grim, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're doing well. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I really hope they change that in Frosthaven, by the way. I really hope in Frosthaven they... They kind of change, change that. We'll see if we can get all of this loot in this room. It's going to be kind of hard, but probably possible. Nice, you clipped the disintegration beam. Oh, I do love it. You like it because of the consistency? You attack for three and you hit for three or miss with a 7.5 chance or so. Yeah. Iron Helm would at least be better balanced if it weren't like armor. Long rest to recharge. Hmm. Interesting. What if it was a one-use-per-scenario item? Because I think, yes, that would be a, a bit of a, a nerf, but maybe not enough of a nerf, because you're basically just putting it in a position where, well, tanks want to long rest or re reset items anyway, so... You know, you're kind of it. It it's not a it. It would actually be a nerf to characters maybe like the mind thief. So I'm rocking it with the mind thief, not for any massive reason except for the fact that it's a cheap item that will stop me from having bad RNG and losing like randomly. Like, there's no real reason for me r running it on the mind thief. Sorry, mind thief. Where's mind thief? I got no m real st massive reason to run it on the mind thief. The only reason being. It doesn't give me negative conditions. So perhaps that could be something that could be looked at. It could give you negative um, attack modifiers, maybe. Um, but also just because it stops me from just randomly getting in trouble. With a character that's got low health, and I'm sometimes going to take a hit because I just get unlucky, like a night demon goes before me or something like that. So I might take the odd hit. If that's a times two, that's a burn every time at this difficulty level. So it's just saving me from that. So maybe if you made it give minus modifiers, I'll be less likely inclined to buy it. Or if you made it like a one use per scenario, then it's a it's lost. Maybe. And you could choose when to use it though. So you wouldn't have to use it on the first times two that it gets drawn against you. Like you could choose. That was kind of unfortunate. After the terrible shrieks and moans of the undead, the sound of someone clapping... Yeah, it could work if you choose which target to not. Yeah, yeah. Like Shadow Arm. Yeah. You see a hooded figure standing at the edge of your torchlight. I think that would work really nicely, because then you just... 
like then there's like this kind of like you know push your luck type factor where you're like well it was like an attack three and i know that there's like bigger attacks coming do i do it or do i not do it i mean i think you ultimately would always probably do it but like unless it was like an attack one or something but if it's like an attack like you know you don't know if they're going to draw times two against you in the scenario like one one thing that i like a lot of people don't like iron helm like a lot of people don't understand why iron helm's good and it's like well it's because it takes away the enemy's ability to do to you what you could do to them which is just to randomly crit and win or lose you know whichever way you want to see it that is why it's so good it's why strengthens so good because there's there's only small amounts of rng in the game right there's only very small amounts of rng and and that is your only it's your attack deck modifier the enemy's attack deck modifier and the enemy's ability cards those are the only three elements of rng in the game everything else is determined determined so any way that you can reduce that rng is just insanely good because it's allowing you to strategically plan everything out and taking away that element of why are we lost because of this that and the other you can plan everything you raise your weapon but the grin on his silhouetted face isn't menacing in a way that calls for arms. It is menacing in a way you've never experienced before. Hmm. Well done, sirs, the figure lilts. My, my, but you do have a way about you, don't you? And you've certainly gotten our attention now. Removing this troublesome crypt of its rogue undead element. We very much prefer our undead to be the controllable variety now don't we? Yes. There is a long pause as the figure stares at you, <laughs> still grinning. I'm annoyed that we left so much gold on the floor in that one chat. That living corpse killing himself was not ideal. Well, perhaps you'd be so kind as to do us another favor. After which we'll be mostly settled on the whole issue of you murdering some of my brethren. He stops grinning. There is a necromancer in Gloomhaven been giving us a spot of trouble <laughs> sending mercenaries out to do her dirty work against us maybe you've met her i think i think steve might have disappeared for a long time <laughs> well i'm sure we could find another steve though but i think that particular steve might have skipped town Jetsera. bring her head to our <laughs> headquarters and we'll see about letting you live Grim, thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub to us. Very, very kind of you. Welcome to the Adventuring Party. I really appreciate your support, buddy. Thank you so much. We are getting towards our goal this month. The goal this month is to uh, have Craig do his entire own scenario chosen by chat. So that will be Craig probably doing Oozing Grove. I mean, you guys are going to vote, but I mean, I'm pretty sure which way it's going to go. Um, and he'll have to do the entire scenario by himself. And he can't blame me then. It's all on him. <laughs> so if you've got a Prime Gaming sub, that was a, it's a perfect time to use it if you'd like to see him do that. <laughs> Watch all of my guides on YouTube. Great content. Awesome, dude. Glad you enjoyed them. All right. Perfect scenario, really. I mean, in terms of like, you know, talking about like how good a scenario could go. I mean, we didn't get all the loot at the end, but we were in a position to maybe min-max the loot and min-max XP. And we, we were very comfortable that scenario, I felt. I don't think we're at any point where we in, uh, did we feel sort of in danger. Apart from maybe when we initially opened the door to the second room, but then like it was just unstable upheaval and, and we should be fine. So yeah, great scenario. Craghart leading the charge again. And we got all of our perks. All of our battle goals. Perfect. That is what it's all about. Five gold each. Oof. Yikes. Mind Thief, least of our killed and lowest loot count. What is this madness? If she had one more turn, that would have changed. Well, the loot number would have changed at least quite drastically. She did get the item in the chest, which she will 
actually sell. So. Right. Level up on Craig. We're getting there with this. We're getting there. We've made some good progress. So we're not that far away. I think we're going to probably sink. Uh, well, we'll probably end up. I'll try and sink these two together, I think. But that's going to be hard. I really wish the game gave you more side scenarios early on. I really do. Not just for the fact that you want to complete this, but also just because they're fun and they're often quite different. I think side scenarios in Gloomhaven are actually pretty cool. Like compared to some other games where they're maybe a bit boring, but like they, most of the time they're, they're actually pretty good. Hey, Val. Great time to jump to the stream. Love this playthrough. Been playing Crag Mind Thief with a friend recently. Awesome, dude. Two excellent characters' choices there. If I was to play two player, I think I would probably play those two. In fact, that's what I played, right? In my. Yeah, that's what I played in my insane speedrun was Crag Heart and uh, Mind Thief. Maybe not the best pairing, but certainly my favorite. From the starters at, at level one, <laughs> to be clear, because there are some that are better. Dig Pit. Ooh. Oh, easy game. Now, we were contemplating, we were contemplating choosing this card purely to redo the traitor challenge from yesterday. And I have Dig Pit too. Because Dig Pit would be really annoying to just consistently keep putting down like two damage stun traps just around your team constantly and then walling them in and being like, what are you going to do? Only like so many characters have jump and they probably only have like one or two cards that have jump on it. So it's not like they're going to immediately be able to kind of get, get out away from it. You got so much side scenarios and no prosperity from your first like city events. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? There could be, a, you could get some more from the city events, but that's not, I feel like there should be a more guaranteed way that you can get a couple. So Dig Pit is not a great card. Um, Cataclysm is not a great card either, <laughs> to be honest. Aside from the fact that this is a very good amount of movement and it's not hard for you to get this. And 26 initiative is again quite good on this character. It's, it's pretty early for this character. And it's nice to have another big attack, right? That is quite cool to have. Right. City encounter chat. Which option do we go for? Option one, option two. You are walking across a silent bridge headed towards the sleeping lion to get a quick meal when you see a quattrel standing in front of a small cart laden with plates of food and curious contraptions. Come, try the delicacies of the east, the quattrel barks. Food enhanced with science. Flavors beyond your wildest imagination. Do we stop and try the food or do we continue on our way to a less adventurous meal? Always go with science. I think everyone went with one, right? You decide to indulge in the unknown and see what the Quattrall is offering. He looks very pleased at your approach and instructs you to inhale a tube of vapors, then take a bite from a bowl full of tiny golden spheres. As the spheres melt in your mouth, the taste mixes with the aroma of the vapors to create a wonderful experience. You pay what you can, but the Quattrall seems solely focused on how much you enjoyed the meal. Very nice. Minus three gold each, but we have been blessed. Worth it. Worth every penny. Cultural gastronomy. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like a pun here. And I don't know why, but I can't think of any famous chefs other than Gordon Ramsay right now. Uh, 
<laughs> Trello is more for project management, so I guess that's why it would be a pain in the ass to use for bug tracking. Uh, Jamie Oliver. Jamie Oliver is a good one. Okay. Any puns with that? No. It needs to sound like Heston. Yeah, it actually, it's more of a Heston thing. Heston's like into his weird food, right? He's the guy who always has all the weird stuff. Heston Quattraltine. There you go. That'll do. Heston Glumenthal. There you go. That's the one. <laughs> Welcome to the quest, Jam Jim Zibs. Jam Zibs. Zips, thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate it. I hope I didn't butcher your name. Welcome to the quest. Welcome in. All right. Oh, perks. Perks, perks, perks. Kind of wants all of the bad perks now, aren't we, really? Well, I say bad. This is still a pretty good perk. Probably going to use dust fairly soon. Maybe next perk. Maybe I could have done that perk, to be honest. Oh, we've got to level up here too. Ooh, I did not see that. Oh, was that... No, we didn't get XP from the event. Oh, must have just missed it. All right, so level seven. We got Vicious Blood. Uh, bad card. Well, I mean, this isn't terrible, but generally bad card. Psychic Projection. Bad card. Seems like it could be usable. I've tried this every which way. I've tried this even with Heavy Bassinet. To give myself immunity to stun. And it is terrible. So we go back and take Corrupting Embrace at level 7. Like every good Mind Thief should. Um, have a lot of advantage now. It is time. Oh, we got two perks. It is definitely time. Vicious Blood is kind of decent. Bottom is Axel. Yeah, but the thing is, is that I think you just Dark Frenzy most of the time. Like, it's not bad, but it's just not as good as the other two level sixes. Like, level six is just two excellent cards. Um, and then, unfortunately, I think when we get to level 8, we get um, Shared Nightmare, which is very good. And then level 9, we get potentially the either Rat King, of course, His Majesty, or we get the, uh, the Kill one. Is that maybe the Nightmare card? We get the we get the good ranged attack at level eight, uh, level eight, and then level nine we get the kill, or you get rat king. So there's, unfortunately, there's no good spot to take vicious blood. That's the problem. So there we have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. I think we made some good, solid progress there. Didn't fail any scenarios. We did have a couple of easy ones there at the end, though. I do think the last two scenarios were a little bit easy, or at least were quite easy to plan out and kind of get going i think we left a lot of gold on the table for the last one which i was a little bit disappointed with decaying crypt we could have definitely got a lot of gold out of that one if we really wanted to so i've just got a little bit unlucky with what the living corpse drew and then what we drew the previous turn and yeah it happens i'm not too fussed though i do think gold can sometimes make the game a little bit too easy at times which i've mentioned a few times before so i'm not too beat up on missing out on some gold we're, we're pretty rich already you know the drill. If you did enjoy the video, please do like and subscribe because it really does help me out here on YouTube and growing the channel and getting this video out there. Also, head over to twitch.tv slash quest if you'd like to see me doing this live on Mondays. And also, I stream on Wednesdays and Sundays too. Wednesdays, weird builds and challenges. And Sunday, the community save, which we play multiplayer with viewers. So come and hang out, talk Gloomhaven, play Gloomhaven, and just have a great time. So all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye. Well, I think so. Yeah. Oh, 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 That's the best thing from Jeff. That's the blessing from...
Uh, uh, Isaac, at this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck uh, for allies in the digital? Uh, 